Before we get into answers, there's one more thing to do, which is make some hand calculations of expected results. Let's take a look at that. If I go back to the framework of what's under the black box, okay, so we know what the mathematical model is, we have, we know what the strategy answer is going to use to solve that mathematical model, and we are going to look at the hand calculations. And as we'll see in a minute, the hand calculations are based on the same mathematical model as um, the answer solution, but it uses an additional property of this particular problem that is that it is statically determinant. And uh, that's an idea that you might have seen um, in your statics course. So, in, you know, we have seen that the framework, you know, the mathematical model is based on uh, knowing the deformed state of the neutral axis and then you can find everything else. So this is what the ANSYS model is based on, the mathematical model. Now, the, the hand calculations, um, and th this is, you know, classic textbook stuff um, from statics, elementary statics, you do the same thing until, you know, the strains and the stresses, but then you say, instead of going to put potential energy minimization, you invoke a corresponding idea, which is equilibrium of the beam, okay? And when the beam is in equilibrium, its potential energy has to be minimized. And so these ideas are the same. So they should give you the same result. And for a statically determinate problem, what we can do is, you know, we can find the moment at any location of the beam uh, without um, determining the displacement. So let's take a look at that. So if I have the beam here, Okay, I'll draw a two-dimensional view of it. And if I have the, the load in the positive y direction, and if I take a cross-section like that, okay, so I can draw that cross-section here, and I can find what that moment is without finding the displacements. So I'll say in that moment is going to be a function of x and and then once I know the moment I, I can I can go back actually okay so um, and I can find what the corresponding you know what the corresponding uh, deflect deflected shape of the neutral axis has to be um, and this will work only for statically determinate problems, whereas the answers we are doing it will work for both statically determinate and determinate problems, which is why you know finite element code like answers uses this particular framework. And then if I take a look at this cross section, uh, I can relate this to the stresses. Okay, so if I if I do if I take this cross section and I draw a view like this, so let me draw it over here. Um, Okay, that's this cross section here. And if I take an infinitesimal area like that, we know that the only uh, force on it is going to be due to sigma x. So this is going to be sigma x times some elemental area dA. And, and then the moment at that cross section is going to be related. So you can say moment at x, you know, so due to this infinitesimal area, it's going to be sigma x dA times some moment arm. And that's this, you know, this y distance of from the, um, from this, this, uh, the neutral axis location. So it's going to be y and you know you have to i won't worry about the sign but actually there's a negative sign and then you have to integrate over the entire area and this way you can relate the the moment to the stresses so that's how you know this moment gets related to sigma x and then once i know sigma x i can calculate epsilon x and i can calculate um, ui of x so this is over the area and 
the result you get, you know, when you, if you plug in the various relations and so on, this is where you will get sigma x equals a classic m y by i. And, and then, you know, so if I take the top fiber, so at a location like that, that distance is going to be, you know, equal to half the height of the cross section. So if I plug that in, um, sigma x max, so that's over here, it's going to be max. And similarly over here, it's going to be max, but in the, it's going to be the same value, but in the opposite direction opposite sign and that comes out to be if you plug in the numbers it'll come out to be 4.64 megapascals okay I should have this as a capital M so that's a, that's a value we can um, check with ANSYS and the other value we can check is you know and from this uh, relationship one can also get what is the the maximum deflection here and that comes out to be p l cubed over 3 e i um, and that works out to be 5.10 millimeters okay so we have some values for the um, the maximum stress um, and actually this maximum stress is going to be, I, I should mention, this is going to be at x equal to zero. And this is going to be at x equal to L. So we have some values to compare with in ANSYS and we'll do that when we get the results in ANSYS. So let's move on to solving the problem in ANSYS.